Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey and welcome to a, another episode of Whiskey In, Whiskey Out. Today we've got my Whiskey Ins and Whiskey Outs for March 2023. You guys know the drill by now, I'm going to be doing a, a little bit of a spiel about the whiskies I got in, then I'll go through some of the whiskies that I killed this month and go through kind of a bit of a, not necessarily a mini review, but almost like a, like a bottle kill final thoughts almost. Um, let's get into it straight away then, no messing around, we'll get straight into whiskey in and see what we got. Now you guys would have seen earlier this week I uh, covered a whiskey that my good friend Alex gave me and um, he gave me a couple more this month as well which is awesome. So coming up on the channel we're going to have something that I know literally nothing about and that's the Ben Nevis Corlees, Corlees, something like that. Yeah, literally don't know anything about that. Haven't even tried it um, yet, so this is what I've got to play with. Um, I'll give it a bit of a, a once-over and bring my thoughts to you when I actually do the video. And same again as well. Um, I have actually tried this one already, though. This is the lag. And with what we've got here is the uh, heavily peated inaugural release 2022 Batch 3 X-Red Wine Charred Cask. There you go. Obviously, that's the uh, Isle of Arran um, new distillery over there. So, um, yeah, we'll give that a fair bash. Not that much to, to, to go with on this one. So that one will probably get covered fairly soon because I don't want that to spend too much time knocking around in that empty bottle. But as always, saying in the middle of it, if you want me to bump any of these bottles up the list a bit, if you're really interested in any of them or my thoughts on them, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to bring them to the camera sooner. Moving on then. Um, I got sent this month the new Kings Barnes Ducat, which is um, going to be an interesting one. Um, I actually I'm looking forward to doing this video because I still have. I don't know if you can just see it. Maybe there, there, there. Um, I still have the dream, the dream to dram. So um, I think a comparison video is in order. No, let me know what you think about that. Would you rather see a, uh, a just a standalone review like I normally do, or would you like to see a direct comparison to what this replaced. Interesting one. Let me know. Then you would have seen last week as well. Um, I've got the uh, Glasgow 1770. Take a deep breath. Red wine and ruby port cask finish. Um, pretty spectacular whiskey if you ask me. Um, really enjoyed that. I'm really enjoying Glasgow 1770 at the moment. Um, haven't tried any that I don't particularly like. I wasn't a big fan of that tequila cask one, but that's just me. Seem to go down well with everybody else. Finally then, um, this was, if you follow me on any kind of like social media, you'd have seen me post about this. This is uh, the Master of Malt Linkwood 11. Now, um, I don't want to go into it in too much detail just yet, but um, I tried this at my local whiskey meet, which is you know a great thing. If you haven't got a local whiskey club, then you know maybe think about setting one up, but the one that we go to, you literally, we managed to convince uh, a, a pub landlord to just let us have, on a Tuesday or something like that, just let us have free reign of one of their little function rooms. Everyone who arrives buys at least one beer or, or maybe more, um, and then we just bring two or three bottles each and we just go nuts on it. So obviously you don't want to bring anything that you, you want to see disappear, but then also it's great to bring things that people haven't tried before. Anyway, this one was brought along and I tried it as I tried many of the of the Master of Malt releases that were there. I think there was something like there was an Irish grain, some secret stuff, whatever. All good. This one, stunning. 35 quid on Master of Malt right now. Linkwood never failed to, 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 to impress. And this one here, the 11 year old, is uh, nothing short of spectacular. So, if you know, get it. <laughs> basically I don't often I'm not often so blunt with my recommendations but probably not worth waiting for me to do the video on that because it's going to take me probably a month or so to get around to it and it'll probably be gone by then but so if you like that if you yeah basically my to give you an idea my reaction to that when I drank it was obviously first of all this is amazing but my first verbal re reaction to it was this is why I got into whiskey you know, um, and for me, I'll go into more about depth when I do my actual review. But something I've noticed in my palate is that it, it it goes around in cyclical. You know, there was a couple of years ago when I was really exploring really big bold flavors, high ABVs, interesting cast types. But I find myself more and more and more coming round to ex bourbon vibes, classic Scotch. That's happening a lot more than it used to, even two years ago. Anyway, by the by. 
pretty good whiskey in this month. Um, really happy to, with that. And as always, if you want to see those videos being bumped up, let me know what your thoughts are. Okay then, let's get into the whiskey out. Um, four again this month seems to be a pretty much a going rate for me at the moment, um, especially with taking things to whiskey clubs and whatnot. But in no particular order, let's just grab them. They're right here. The first one then, um, I had this around for a while, but this is the uh, the Wax House whiskey. I think this is release number four, and it was a Cotswolds four-year-old first fill STR cask. Um, nothing short of stunning. You know, I, you know me, I like Cotswolds really impressed with their especially their earlier releases and this was one of the first independently bottled ones that i tried there was also the gulliver's 47 but this one here being presented at um what was it 54 percent yeah nothing short of stunning um and i was i was gutted to see it go but then one of my general rules is that once i start once you start getting pretty low usually i say when it's below the label but when the label's this close to the bottom of the of the bottle i don't tend to go with that but once it starts getting pretty low I don't get fancy about it, I don't get smart about it, I just stick it on the shelf that I know that I'm going to kill um, and I just get it gone because I don't, I never want to see good whiskey go to ruin just sitting on a shelf so there you go. Keep going then, we have the, uh, this is the small batch bourbon whiskey from Americana, uh, this came to me via Somerton Club um, of course, 50 quid for a, I would say a pretty good, it was a pretty good bourbon, obviously this turned out to be MGP which if you're in America that's two a penny right you can you know for 50 quid you could probably go and get your own bottles of this but you know or you know obviously not 50 quid total but yeah you, you could walk into literally any liquor store and get yourself a, a, probably an equivalent to this but as I said on my video to this it's pretty difficult to get good quality relatively cheap bourbon over here it's not it's not impossible it's just pretty difficult. You've got to put some effort in. You can't just walk into a supermarket. You have to go into a specialist or online or whatever. Um, so to get something like this, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed from start to finish, um, for the 50 quid, I was happy with. You can see the cork's already gone. I ended up putting that in another bottle because uh, my Budahaven 18 cork broke, nearly broke on a live stream the other day. Right, keep going then. We've got the, the rare whiskey blended scotch uh, Oloroso edition. Now this, if you didn't catch my video on this and if you don't know who these guys are, this is the Jackton Distillery up near Glasgow, uh, not far from Glasgow. Um, interesting bottle design, I like the bottle design, nice little fusy thing, but this isn't their whiskey, this is a, a blend of, of whatever, scotch, so obviously there's some stuff in there. Literally no idea what it is. They had a standard release, which I did cover, um, and the Oloroso expression, which they sent me, um, but at 40%, it was bad. The fairest thing to say about it was that it was it was boring. Um, it was infinitely easy to drink. You know, it had no no, no nothing bold about it. Nothing uh, nothing too overly interesting about it. But it wasn't too challenging either. To its detriment, you know, it, I, I don't like. I, I like to be somewhat challenged. Um, yeah, it was just a bit boring. Obviously, I finished the bottle, which is something I couldn't say for the bog standard rare release. That was just a, a blended Scotch whiskey of, of 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 similar ilk to the, what you'd get in your supermarket. You know, like your your um, what do you call them? It's the famous grouses and the bells and things like that. It was a, a touch better than that, but I still it didn't suit my palate, so I gave it to a friend. But um, this, although I did drink it to myself, um, wouldn't wouldn't recommend genuinely. Um, that said. I have it on good authority, I say this all the time, go and check out the Whiskey Diaries video on this because he actually went to visit them and to try some of their new make and the spirit that they've got aging in casks and what they're doing there for their own spirit is apparently quite nice, if if not really good. Um, so a shame, a shame this is, but um, yeah, um, the, the potential to hurt a brand, I think, if you if you if you're looking at making premium spirits, if you know, not that I expect anyone watching this video is making their own spirits, but if you are, uh, you know, aim aim high, aim high. Um, I, I get that you need to, to sort of have some investment while you're doing it, but that that is not the way to go. Anyway, moving on, final one then today. We have the Tullabarden, the Murray. Uh, this is the triple port cask finish. Um, these guys were legends actually they sent me this as a Christmas present I mean obviously they knew I was going to review it so you know take that but 
this one here, yeah, if, if you if you chart my timelines of all of these reviews, you'll notice that I do my review, then they sit on the shelf, and I go to them when I can be bothered. This one here, I couldn't keep my dirty mitts off of it. It's so good. I just kept going to it time and time again, and um, it did not like. This is probably the shortest between a, um, a a review and the bottle kill that I've had in in a long time, a long time. Um, but yeah, super, 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 super good. Really, really impressed with that. Um, yeah, there you go. That's my whiskey and whiskey out. Let me know what your thoughts are. You know, as always, I love to read what you guys are drinking and what you're killing. Um, you know, I know a lot of you are on buying bands right now, which is fine. But if if something snuck through, let me know what you've uh, what you've accidentally put in your uh, in your online cart. Uh, let me know what you're killing. Let me know what you're drinking. Just have a chat about whiskey, whatever you want. Stick it in the comments below. If you don't want it to be public, you can always email me. My email address is all over my website, nonsensewhiskey.com. Go and check it out. Get in touch. I'll always respond. In any case, that's another Whiskey In, Whiskey Out for March 2023. I look forward to seeing you next month. And as always, check out the reviews of the whiskies in between. See you soon.